Yeah, what's your name? Anthony, y'all. Thank you, man, for like stopping and just, just check it out. You might want to see it and then, trust me, man, like you'll come back. All of this is new. In the last two weeks, what's in the rubber bands? What's in the rubber bands are like pre-COVID, maybe a month ago. But I update my work so much because I'm out here every day. So I don't want to be known as that, as that artist that's out there. I want to be known as a person who's like, I'm, I'm making shit every day. So I just want to showcase it. So all of this work is from a post-COVID? Uh, I would say anything that's in the rubber bands, which you'll probably show in the B-rolls are pre-COVID, but yeah, pretty much uh, post-COVID work. Uh, a lot of drawings, a lot of sketches, a lot of abstract work, a lot of revolutionary stuff. Uh, just content showcasing what's happening. Police brutality, but also I'm showing images where you have like a person with samurai. Give me a second. What's up, ladies? Feel free to get the Instagram if you don't got time. You don't want to miss out. 7,000 pieces sold to people just like you. You know, like you may have a dude with a samurai, but then it's contemporary, but anachronism in literature is when you have, like, let's say, George Washington or like a horse and a buggy in, in the 21st century. So I like to like just juxtapose. So I'm doing a lot of that right now. 
did any of your daughters come into mind when you made this? Yo, uh, so I'm, I'm working on a COVID book, the COVID uh -huh. Chronicle that people on my Instagram now uh, now know about it. So all the black and whites are COVID pieces. Okay. And I've been thinking about just different things. So children. Mm -hmm. So like childhood is kind of death. There's one where like a kid is playing a Game Boy, bro, but it's the crying of the Game Boy. Hold on. Okay. Uh, you know, I like that. I mean, it's still post COVID. I mean, I've been here. Yo, and you don't and you don't need cash to pay. You you can Venmo Cash App, PayPal. Oh, beautiful. Yo, so this piece right here, right? He don't even know about this piece. It's historical, bro. I got arrested in October doing this because I had my art on the on the ground. So I had like three officers that were just on me. And that's the uh, that's the Venmo. Now notice that the cops don't care. But sometimes park rangers focus on artists versus drug dealers because some people just don't like people who shine light you feel me so i beat the case and i'm back out here just doing what i'm doing uh this happened in october but this is me in the middle and you got jay-z in the background yeah yeah so that's jay-z's portrait in the background you got me with the with the three officers that were holding me and i'll leave like just the rest for you to study for you and your children uh, it's already been personalized, so it's one of one made on March 8th, 2020, but I like to put the time in the place where you bought it. Can I do that? Beautiful. Yo, so the message is, never stop walking Arrow with the camera, artist key. You feel me? And that's uh, 7.40 p.m., 7.28, uh, 7.29 rather. 2020, so like, this is history right here, bro. What size are these? Is that just, these are fabric? Yes, yes, it's fabric. Uh, la plata no es todo. Es la conexión. Yo amo el Sí. Y yo encuentro la persona como usted. <laughs> like, I found him. My new art is inspired by, <coughs> excuse me, the desire to just create happy art, but not happy art. Like I'm just, I've created so much political art. We've been bombarded with so much negativity that I'm now creating just strictly abstract pieces. Uh, pieces where I'm studying colors, studying randomness, like mood. Some days I don't really want to paint, I just want color, I just want to see color, I just want to see art. And so I'm delving into the unknown because we've been pushed into a kind of new uh, world. And I call, call this the post-COVID world. Uh, today I did a skull, which has to do with like death, but also maybe legacy, outliving yourself. And then I variated that uh, in different colors, like the same skull. So that's sort of like what my art, I'm still doing like the political art, like I'm doing pieces on police brutality, people fighting back. Some of the images that I'm seeing from the riots across America, I use that in my art. Like there's a piece of a guy holding an Uzi. That's a photo that I found and decided to bring it to, uh, you know, put paint on it to paint that image. Has the new art been selling more than no, I can't say, uh, I mean, I've always been selling, you know, uh, I would say that I was selling more when I came out into the streets, definitely more uh, just volume. Now it's more, now I've sort of got, I've become more strategic. So before COVID, I was releasing a lot of $20 pieces, 20 and 40. Now it's just strictly 50 and $60 pieces. Um, $100 pieces. So I basically got 50, 100 in the middle, and then you got 60 of their frame. So less sales, but when people stop, they want to support. So I'm not really, I haven't felt a dent yet. You feel me? Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm blessing that in the sense that I'm always thinking about just my hustle and how to redefine it, how to re strategize how to think about the obstacles, right? So there's an obstacle right now that people don't have jobs. 
but there's still money out here. You know, during the depression, people were buying alcohol, so the bootleggers were getting it. So I'm thinking like a bootlegger when it comes to this art shit out here. What I want to say, man, is just follow your heart a thousand degree, man. Like, I've been painting. Yo, I thought, I didn't think that COVID would destroy my hustle. But when it happened, I was like, damn, we're, we're, in, in, we're, we're in for a time. And immediately, I kind of thought that shit would be super difficult. But I then started to think and meditate and just think about, you know, just building my brand. So I got with the, with the merch where people in the streets are now like, yo, your shit is crazy online. Um, I started writing books and I started like releasing more black and white pieces. So what I want to tell everyone, man, if you ever find this, this, this documentary, man, is you are a god or a goddess. The world will tell you that you're not and will try to make you feel small. That's why architecture in the Western world is so hot. But you just got to believe in yourself Live your life, don't really trip on like the end goal. Just enjoy the process every day. And do get money, because you can't really expand your ideas or proliferate them if you're broke. So whatever you gotta do, man, just get money. Like writing books was about getting money. Like that's my philosophy. Money is not important. If I was if I had to collect rocks, I would get rocks. You feel me? So that's that's all I wanna say, man. Like art. It's real. Like, look, you got an artist over there that I've inspired who's just making money out here. You know? Seek and find. So here's the key, and if you just keep flowing, bro, just every day loving the process, my G. Yeah, bro. You will then be able to hold your fucking dream. Right, I'm at Oriel about two to three years ago inside at 14th Street Union Square train station. He had his art out, he had it on the walls and on the here. floor taped up and I was admiring it I couldn't afford it at the time because I really had no money so when I saw him I was like oh I really like your work you know you know he was like how much was it and you know I really like it because I like to draw too so he offered me you know he said it's okay I, I understand if you don't have any money I was like no I really want to donate to you like you know I really like your work so he made me something right then and there on this plastic clear film paper that he had and he autographed it, he rolled it up and taped it and gave yes. it to me. And I still have it to this day. Wow. I still have it. And then I'm walking through here right now and I bumped into him. And now he has even more art out and I love it. And I'm admiring it and I see and it's him again. <laughs> My name's Antonio Garcia, I'm from Brooklyn. Uh, originally from Mexico, crossed the border when I was three though. My hustle was art. Um, I think like any other artist, Jay-Z, um, Nas, Tupac, they sold their art in the street. So I tell myself, why not? Why can't I? Um, we see Basquiat, he did it. We see Keith Herring did it. Um, you see all these greats, people that before me, they were doing it, Picasso was doing it, you know, so that's my hustle. I've been doing art since, since I can remember. It was a hobby at first and then, um, and then I started thinking about it. I took, I took, a, I took some shrooms, I 
something kicked in where there was a hunger in me. It let me know that um, art was my calling, art was something that I should follow. And I just took it by the horns and, and I, I did what I can with it, you know. Um, it's now, it's now been like almost, almost uh, a year in to my uh, hustle and I can say I'm very blessed and I stay blessed. Yes, sir. You can find me on Instagram mainly, uh, Antonio Garcia 274. Uh, and then if you check the link in my bio, I sell art in a website because COVID-19 had me fucked up. <laughs>